Hello! Jessica Frost Ballas here with my monthly Crafty Quintet video for Simon Says Stamp. Today I'm sharing my top 5 favorite budget-friendly crafting tools. These are my must-haves that are never far from reach on my desk, so let's get started. My desk must-haves include a stamp chamois, an embellishment tray, a craft pick, reverse tweezers, and a sander. I'll explain the various ways I use them as I create this card. To start, I blend the background of my card. I blend tumbled glass and blueprint sketch Distress Oxide ink onto a piece of Strathmore Bristol cardstock. I set that aside to dry while I work on the rest of the card. Next, I stamp the wild meadow flowers from Mama Elephant onto a piece of Arches Cold Press watercolor paper with VersaFine and heat emboss it with clear embossing powder. And then I use my Lawn Fawn stamp chamois to clean off the stamp. These chamois are awesome for cleaning stamps. They're lint free and leave no residue on your stamps and can also be easily hand washed or thrown into your washing machine to clean. I own two, so I always have one on hand if I'm washing the other. When I'm done using it, I squeeze out the excess water and let it air dry until next time. I've prepped my flowers for watercoloring by taping them to a hardboard, and I've also squeezed a tiny bit of Distress Ink reinkers onto a palette and added a drop of water to each color. I like using the reinkers when I want a really vibrant result, as they're definitely brighter than just using the ink pads. I wet the flower petals first and then drop a little paint onto the wet paper to spread it around. Then I take a clean damp brush and blend the color out across each petal. You'll notice that I'm using my stamp chamois again. When I dip my paintbrush in water, I usually tap it once over a paper towel and then touch it to the chamois. The chamois absorbs just the right amount of water off the brush so that the brush isn't dripping wet but also isn't too dry. If I just use a paper towel, the brush tends to be way too dry to blend out the paint. I also quickly drag the brush tip down the chamois, which helps the bristles keep their shape. This is the same chamois I just used to clean my stamp off. I just folded the dirty part up and I'm left with a clean area to work with. I'm using worn lipstick, picked raspberry, candied apple and mustard seed for the flowers, and cracked pistachio and evergreen bough for the greenery. Another quick tip. My palette is the packaging from a set of Hero Arts Infinity dies. I simply placed a piece of white cardstock inside the plastic packaging, and now I have a perfect, easy to clean palette that's also great for travel. I'm going to speed up the watercoloring now, but once I'm done painting, I let the flowers dry and then die cut them with a coordinating border die. And here's where the stump sander comes in. This tool is actually meant to be used with Gamsol and paper stumps, but I love using it to help clean up die cut images. All dies, no matter the quality, seem to leave little tiny bits of paper stuck to the edges of the die cut image. I like to run the full sander gently across the back of the image to shake off any pieces that are easy to dislodge. Then I tear off a little piece of the sandpaper and use it to go over all the intricate edges. You can also fold and roll the sandpaper to get into every nook and cranny. I kept a piece of black cardstock underneath me so you could see all the bits I was dislodging as I worked. Then I die cut the big words Happy Birthday Die from Mama Elephant with white cardstock. I used my craft pick to poke out all the negative spaces of the die and then repeated the sanding process with my sander. The craft pick is something I use for poking out all sorts of intricate dies. 
It's also the perfect size to fit inside the holes in the actual wafer thin dies in case you need to separate a particularly stubborn die from cardstock. I've tried other alternatives, but this is what I always come back to. I also use it regularly to push tiny embellishments or images around in my cards while I'm trying to figure out placement and don't want my clumsy fingers messing things up. They're also great for flipping over jewels or sequins, or for unclogging a bottle tip, though if you do that you'll want to make sure you clean it immediately. Next I add a layer of foam tape to the back of my flowers and adhere it to the bottom of the blended panel. I trim off the overhang and then add the sentiment with liquid adhesive. The reverse tweezers are also an absolute must-have on my desk. I use them nearly every day for holding cardstock while I'm embossing, so I don't burn my fingers. I also use them to adhere intricate sentiments and images to cards, so I can see everything clearly as you see here. I've added a small label sentiment also from the Wild Meadow set, and finished my card off with some watermelon and valentine jewels from Pretty Pink Posh. My final budget-friendly must-have is this embellishment tray from Studio Katya. It's perfect for holding embellishments while I decide where to arrange things, and the triangle points make it easy to pour the excess back into containers or bags when you're done. I love to add sparkly embellishments to my cards, and this is perfect for a variety of things like sequins, jewels, or glitter. It's also perfect if you're using small dies and need a place to keep them from getting lost. I keep a few in my large containers of embossing powder as scoops, and I also keep extra around when I want to use single jars of embossing powder or embossing glitters. And that's it! I highly recommend each of these tools as everyday crafting must-haves, and I'd love to know if you have any other budget-friendly favorites. Thanks for joining me today, and I look forward to sharing a new Crafty Quintet with you next month. Have a wonderful day, and until next time, happy crafting! Bye!